Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 21st June 2020. I am Sagar Nandi. I used to work in IT. I have retired now. I am swing trading stocks using the Q trading systems and techniques that I develop. You may contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com. This is my YouTube channel where you may watch this and other trading related videos. I regularly share live stock and market analysis on my Twitter page Sagarnandi and traders forum sagarnandi.com. All these forums are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. I am not an investment advisor. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. In this video, I will demonstrate the use of the Q360 degrees analysis techniques to look at the oil and gold commodities and then look at the markets, sectors, industries and stocks. I will look at stocks both using fundamental analysis fundamental scorecard as well as technical analysis using Q charts. For technical analysis, I will use Q Elite running on trade station and I will also use Q Global and Q Finder running on Metastock. For fundamental and peer analysis, I will use Q Vital. For sector industry rotation analysis, I will use QEdge and for market analysis, I use QIndex. All these three tools, QVital, QEdge and QIndex, they run on Metastock Zenith. All these Q systems run in 100% real-time mode. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. Let me make an important announcement before starting the regular market roundup. We have completed transferring our system to a new provider, new server provider, Amazon. Earlier it was on a different server. Because of the server change, all the queue users are required to upgrade to the latest queue versions. I have already sent out emails to everybody using the forum memberships. You might have already updated to the latest versions. If not, you may do that by 22nd June because from 23rd June, the older versions may stop working. If you don't find the email, you may go to the queue download and install category download the latest queue versions from this download category and then follow the installation steps under the different product categories that will upgrade your systems to the latest versions that was the important announcements please remember to upgrade to the latest versions by 22nd june now let me start the regular market roundup Let's start with the oil ETF USO. I am looking at it using Q Global running on Metastock. I am using the weekly daily at a glance template. In this period, oil had dropped sharply, and here the bullish headwind reversal signal could catch the exact bottom. Since then, oil is going up. Oil's backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish as of Friday's close. In the daily chart, it is going in an uptrend. Price is supported by memory trend line support. The weekly was already in cyan color, backdrop was cyan color, and on Thursday, the daily gave a cyan color flow candle that met all the requirements of a go with flow trend following long setup on Thursday. 
if you took the long trade on Thursday, your initial profit target would be the upper boundary and you might put stop just below the recent low. Gold ETF GLD In the weekly chart, gold is moving inside a range for many weeks now. One week ago, the backdrop color was bearish magenta though the shape was somewhat bullish you might say because it had a long hollow body. This week price went up further. Now the backdrop color is bullish and the shape is also clearly bullish. In the daily chart you can see the same range bound move. Price is bound by this watermark resistance line and also a memory resistance line. On the lower side it is supported by memory support line. If you watched my previous webinars and videos you know that when price broke below this support level I had mentioned that if price could recover above the same memory support you could look for a bullish trade. That analysis was useful. In effect you could buy gold right at the lower edge of the sideways range. From there price has gone up. On Friday we have a bullish flow candle. Looking at the weekly and daily chart it seems that the next move of gold will be to the upside. Though there is no Q trade setup right now, if you are holding a long position in gold you may continue to hold that long position. After the commodities, let me continue with the market level analysis. Analyzing the S&P 500 futures, E-mini futures, ES, using the at a glance weekly daily chart template. One week ago, the weekly backdrop candle color and shape both were indecisive, color was yellow neutral. This week price reversed, it went up. The shape is also mostly bullish and the color is also bullish. If you look at the candle chart for past three weeks, you can see that price is moving sideways and it is showing reversal. One week ago, price went down one week prior to that price went up and this week price went up again. This is showing very up down up move. This is something that I already explained in the previous market roundup that up down up move is continuing. In the daily chart price is inside a range now bound by the resistance memory and multiple support memory trend lines. It is at the upper edge of the sideways range. Looking at that, it seems that the likely next move of S&P 500 will be to the downside. That will also continue to show the up-down, up-down move if that happens. If you look at the S&P 500 ETF, SPY, that is looking weaker than the S&P 500 E-mini futures. Here though price went up in the weekly chart, the backdrop color remained neutral yellow and the shape is very indecisive because it has an upper tail and also a hollow body. Indecisive shape, indecisive color showing weakness relative to the S&P 500 E-mini futures. That is also shown in the daily chart where the Friday's candle color, flow candle color turned magenta bearish. This is also inside a narrow range but it is not at the upper edge of the range, it is in the middle of the range. S&P 500 futures was at the upper end of the range. All these are showing that SPY is weaker relative to the futures.
because it is right in the middle of the sidewise range we may not look for any swing trade in SPY right now. Dia ETF. Here also the backdrop color is yellow. The shape is indecisive in the weekly chart and price closed below the memory support line. It tried to go up after a lower open, however closed below the memory support line that is showing that it is possible that the next move of dia will be to the downside in the daily price is inside a triangle pattern friday's candle color flow color is bearish magenta however because it is inside a triangle pattern you may not take any directional swing trade in dia right now small cap ETF IWM the weekly shape is indecisive though the color is bullish in the daily the indecision is showing from the price being inside a triangle pattern bound by memory resistance and memory support Friday's traffic light color is bearish however because it is inside a triangle pattern you may not look for any directional swing trend that leaves us with Nasdaq E-mini futures NQ. This is very bullish. The weekly backdrop color and shape both are bullish and daily is in a clear uptrend. It is not inside a range. What about the ETF QQQ? This is QQQ. This is also very bullish. Both the weekly and the daily are in a clear uptrend. Out of the four market ETFs, three are inside a range SPY, DIA, and IWM. They are in a range. There is no clear direction, but QQQ, the NASDAQ ETF, NASDAQ futures, are in a clear uptrend. After the market level analysis, I am continuing with the sector level analysis. I will analyze the sectors using percentage graphs across multiple periods. This is a picture from one week ago comparing that week with the previous week's performance. I showed in the previous market roundup video that one week ago the market reverts to the downside from upside prior to that. If the up down up move continued then this week we would expect to be bullish. That is what happened more or less. More sectors went up this week and few sectors went down. 7 went up and 4 went down. That is kind of reversal, not exact reversal, but kind of reversal from one week ago where all the sectors declined. This is showing that this week the sector strengthened, but the percentage up moves are relatively much smaller than the percentage down moves of the previous week. Though the sector strengthen, the strengthening seems feeble. This is a look at the sector performance of the current week across three periods. Over the monthly period from the blue bars, you can see that all the sectors are still up. Over one month, the sectors are still bullish. Over 10 days, sectors turn negative. All of them are down. That means even though this week is overall bullish, 7 sectors went up, 4 went down, the up move of the 7 sectors was not enough to compensate for the down move of the previous week. That is what resulted in all the sectors being down over 10 days period. What are the two strongest sectors this week? Healthcare and consumer staples. 
they are in defensive areas the third strongest sector is information technology that is non-defensive information technology probably went up because of some very large cap stocks going up during the week one week ago i showed that though the weekly performance was bearish that friday's performance was bullish if that up down up move continued this week we would expect the opposite this week overall the weekly performance is bullish therefore what do we expect from friday's performance let's see we would probably expect a bearish performance and that is true one day sector performance shows that almost all the sectors went down only healthcare that is a defensive sector went up by a small percentage the sector performance graphs are showing that they were moving in an up down up down fashion and that movement is continuing if next week the same up down up down move continues then we have to assume that the market and the sectors will come down next week I think we have covered enough material to decide the current market outlook and prefer trading direction. I am keeping my market outlook to be neutral. Why? Because three of the four market ETFs are inside a range. When they are inside a range, I have to keep the market outlook as neutral. What about my preferred trading direction? that i am changing to bearish why because some of the etfs though they are inside the range they are at the upper edge of the range and for some of the etfs the friday's candle color is bearish red or magenta also the sectors are continuing up down up down move this week overall the sectors are bullish though friday is bearish the previous week was bearish if we consider that the up down up down move will continue the sectors are expected to come down next week that is why i am keeping my preferred trading direction to be bearish last week i had it as neutral if you are following me on the traders forum sagannandi.com then you would know that i tend to be little bit ahead of others using the q systems and techniques and that happened this week as well why because last three or four trading ideas that i shared through youtube live videos or through my traders forum all had been bearish and i think all of them are in a profit now you might check them out from my forum sagannandi.com we saw that on friday the market weakened we could see that from the market etfs and in real time we could also see that from qh the sector industry rotation analysis tool on friday 91% of the sectors that is 10 of the 11 sectors went down if you looked at the industries in the usa market on friday 81% of the industries were down and if you looked at the stocks in qh 71% of the stocks were down in fact looking at this qh in real time and then looking at some of the stocks in real time i could take short trades at the top i took one in apple right at the very top and i had shared that on my traders forum again you may check that out from www.sagannandi.com qh showed the market weakness on friday right from the beginning of the day i also ran q finder 
it's a powerful tool that shows the different Q signals across thousands of stocks. This is the result after Friday's market close. 70% of the symbols on which I ran Q Finder, they showed bearish picture. And if you looked at the total number of signals, then 77% of the signals were bearish and only 23% were bullish. Let's look at the three categories of signals. In terms of strength signals, gap ups were much more than gap down moves. That showed that on Friday initially many stocks went up with a gap up move. However, if you look at the pressure moves, high pressure moves were much more on the bearish side. If you look at the trend continuation signals as well as reversal signals, for both of them the red bars are much bigger than the green bars showing that overall the market was very bearish as seen from the different Q signals across thousands of stocks. That means the weakness was at the sector level, at the industry level, at the stock level on their respective charts and also at the Q signals level. Looking at that you would only look for short trades on Friday. In fact, if you followed the Q systems and techniques in the past week, you would probably look for more bearish trades than bullish trades and that is exactly what I did and that is what I shared on my traders forum and Twitter page. Could we look for some trades as of Friday's close? Why not? I can see there were a large number of breakouts on Friday, bearish breakouts. We could look for breakout trades. One way to look for them is to go to the bearish tab in Q Finder and look for all the breakout trades. That is where the symbols have orange color cell under breakout column. I could look for them by select the column button here. That is one way. You could look for breakout trades for example. Another way would be to look for the symbols that are giving maximum number of signals on Friday using this column. You may double click to sort by the total number of signals column and unusually you can see several symbols have six bearish signals on Friday and many more have five and even much more than that have four total number of bearish signals on Friday. That shows that the market was pretty weak at the stock level on Friday. Let's look at the stocks that gave six bearish signals on Friday. Here are all the symbols that displayed six bearish Q signals on Friday. Let me go through them one by one. This is PEG. I'm using the Q entry daily chart first. If I see a proper trade setup on the daily chart, then I may open it up using the weekly daily at a glance template to confirm the trade setup. PEG was inside a triangle pattern. It broke out of the triangle pattern on Friday, displayed a bearish flow candle. Friday's activity was extremely high. All those are bearish, however, there is a memory trend line support nearby. That is why, though it is looking bearish, I am going to avoid taking a short trend. Next stock, DTE. This was also inside a range. It seems to be breaking out of the range to the downside. Friday's flow color is bearish. Friday's candle shape is very bearish. It is displaying a reversal candle on Friday. That is it opened higher, had a gap up open and then came down sharply closing far below Thursday's low. 
that is a reversal candle and that is showing up in the band indicator on Friday price dropped with extreme high activity that is showing bearishness you might consider taking a short trade in DTE using the breakout short trade setup next stock FE this was also inside a triangle pattern on Friday it closed just above the triangle pattern because it closed just above the memory support on Friday's close I wouldn't take any short trend CWT again a stock that broke out of the triangle pattern but there is a memory support nearby I will avoid taking a short trade here this is the last of our stocks that gave 6 Q berry signals on Friday this was also inside a range inside a triangle pattern on Friday it broke below that Friday's flow color is bearish Friday it fell with extreme bearish pressure very high activity and it also displayed a reversal candle this is giving the best looking breakout short trade setup on Friday one thing you notice that all these stocks that we saw today they were inside a range and on Friday several of them broke below the range at least broke below the first support trend line that is reflective of how the market was last week the market was inside a range and Friday was bearish we saw that the stock D gave a breakout short trade setup on Friday on Q technical charts do you immediately go and short the trade you could do that you could do that if you are using only technical analysis to decide your trades however I like to align more and more forces along with my trades and therefore before shorting I like to ensure that I am shorting a fundamentally weak stock and for that I use Q vital this is Q vital it runs in real time and calculates the fundamental scorecard of a stock and can also compare a stock with its peer stocks here I use D as the root stock and peer relationship same or similar industries using the industry plus selection that selected 49 stocks in the industry these are the 49 stocks it has updated the vital statistics from the color coding you can instantly see that the valuation is showing that it is overvalued stock the valuation is in magenta color and the earnings growth is also negative negative and it is coming down that shows that it is a possible star shorting candidate in terms of fundamentals we both in terms of valuation as well as earnings growth the pie chart is showing that all the peer stocks were pretty weak 94 percent of them went down on friday that is showing that multi utilities in itself was weak on friday the industry multi utilities in itself it was weak was it weaker than other industries to assess that you may use QH the real-time sector industry rotation analysis tool to look up the industry scorecard for a stocks industry like multi utilities you may click the cog icon whenever you see the cog icon if you click that cog stands for industry it will look up the industry scorecard I click the cog icon and that took me to Q edge instantly from the color coding of the industry scorecard you can see that the industry was weak on Friday and not only that it had been weak for a while this is when I finally decide to short the stock I have ensured that the industry is weak I have found a fundamentally weak stock inside the industry 
and also a stock that is giving an optimal shorting point on the Q technical charts. And my preferred trading direction at the market level was already decided to be bearish. This is what I would call a Q360 degrees trend. What if you wanted to buy stocks instead of shorting stocks? Usually, personally, I avoid buying when my preferred trading direction is bearish. However, if you still want to buy stocks, you may only look for buying stocks in strong industries, stocks that are fundamentally strong and that are giving a technical buy point. You could look for such trades using the Q finder, the bullish tab. You can see several stocks went up on Friday. You could look for a buy setup among them. Another way you could look for buy setups and that is a very efficient technique is to use the insight in Q Edge. Q Edge shows the best performing and worst performing stocks under various categories. One of the categories from where I regularly find buying candidates is this best performing undervalued stocks. On Friday, you could find Legion or Ligand pharmaceuticals from there, LGND. Let's look it up using Q charts. On the daily chart, it is looking bullish. Let me change to the at a glance weekly daily chart. Now you may apply the unambiguous trade setup checklist for go with flow trend following long trade setup and you will see that on Friday it gave a trend following go with flow long trade setup. The weekly backdrop is bullish. The daily is in an uptrend. Price is supported by memory support. In fact, on Friday, price precisely hit the trend line support and sharply went up from there with a reversal candle. Friday displayed extreme bullish pressure and extreme high volume also. Friday gave bullish flow candle that met all the checklist requirements of the Goit flow trend following long trade setup and you could take a long trade on LGND. Again, if you are following 360 degrees technique, which seems to be much more powerful than just using technical charts. If you are using that 360 degrees technique, then you would like to make sure that LG and this industry is moving opposite to the market, that it is stronger than other industries. Let's check that out. I'm going to go to Q Edge and click the cog icon after selecting LGND that's going to take me to the industry of the stock that is biotech and instantly from the color coding you can see that here it was weaker but since then over 10 day 5 day 2 day and 1 day Friday it is continuously going up relative to the other industries that is showing the strength in this industry and if you go back to Q insight you remember you found the stock LGND from the best performing undervalued stocks therefore you knew from here that the stock is undervalued if you want to carry out a complete fundamental and peer analysis you may click this icon that will take you to Q-Vital and carry out a fundamental and peer analysis for the stock LGND. Q-Vital has completed the calculation and again from the scorecard you can see LGND is undervalued. It has negative earnings growth, however the earnings growth is improving. Improving earnings growth and undervalued stock that is good enough reason in terms of fundamentals to look for a buy setup. And we had a go with flow trend for the long trade setup. The pie chart is showing that majority of stocks, the 64 PR stocks in biotech industry went up. We already saw that relatively also biotech is stronger than 
other industries. And on Friday, in itself, the industry was very strong. Relatively, it was strong and in itself also, it was strong. That is giving us enough reason to buy a stock in the industry. Again, you found a 360 degrees buy candidate. And here you found that buy candidate in a fundamentally strong stock and in a strong industry as well. Such 360 degrees trades tend to be much more reliable than only technical trades. As you can see, whatever be the market condition, almost every day, you are able to find trades both in the long direction as well as in the short direction using the 360 degrees technique. You may keep an eye on my traders forum, sagarnandi.com and also on my Twitter page, Twitter handle Sagarnandi. I regularly share live market and Q360 degree stock analysis on these forums. That is all for today. I thank you for attending and look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.